Welcome back to the 2024 TTA Tour Brisbane Championships. My name is Andrew Udall and I will be your commentator. And joining me in the booth, we have a voice that you might be familiar with, Daniel O'Neill. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing fantastic, mate. Thank you for allowing me into this sacred area. <laughs> it is very exciting to be here for the men's semi-final. I'm pretty excited to see Finn come up here and play in Brisbane, of course. And um, Yining Wang, a uh, bit of an unknown quantity um, but has been causing a bit of a ruckus in the earlier rounds and getting through quite cleanly. That's what we like to see. Yeah, Finn, a big name, an Olympic player for Australia, qualifying with his compatriots Nicholas Lam, Juan Bay as well. And Finn, what an amount of achievements that he has had. He has done so much for Australia. Of course, was the closest to getting through the next round of the men's singles at the Olympics, losing 4-3 after leading three love, but of course the current Oceania Cup champion as well as a player who has uh, beaten, for those who know the name, Eugene Wang, a Canadian player who at the time was in the top 50, ranked 48, I believe. So Finn, a player who has at uh, no point experienced anything but a success. Of course, uh, the semi-finals here, the best of uh, five. Pretty sure? I believe so, yeah. I believe it's best of five, but we may be wrong, and we'll guess we'll find out shortly. Yes, we will. <laughs> um, absolutely. I was um, there as well at the Australian Championships, thankfully, to witness Finn's match in the final against Dylan Chambers. Oh, what a good match um, that was. Really, really high-quality match. Dylan, of course, coming up with the goods against Finn in a really, really tight match between two boys that know each other very, very well. Um, so... 
really excited to see what he can do so short after the Olympics. No rest for the wicked. Straight yeah, exactly. back into it. Yep. Of course, good to see such a big name in Brisbane as well. well definitely. And we, we haven't had the opportunity to have so many strong players as well all at once in quite a long time. Bringing the TTA Tour and one of um, t Table Tennis Australia's more recent initiatives is... Um, starting to really take off, I think, over the last few years. and Every year getting stronger and stronger as more players journey up to get those valuable, valuable ranking points. Exactly, and it's good, of course, for the players in Queensland getting this opportunity to play the best of the best in Australia. People who have achieved so much and has represented their country at, of course, the levels such as the Olympics. Definitely. Um, and so, uh, great opportunity because the two players looking at each other's bats allowed to do that before. Many different playing styles. Yes. Some play pimple, short, long. Absolutely, you know, all support for those pimple players out there wanting to do something different. <laughs> no, no bias on my end, of course. <laughs> um, and looking at Yining Wang play as well, he's um, a bit of an unknown quantity, as I was mentioning before. He was there at Nationals. However, from what I understand, he wasn't playing. He was there coaching, uh, had quite a few charges under his belt that he was looking after. Some of our top under-11 players, such as uh, Angela Yarn, Daniel Lin, um, some very, very strong medalists in the younger grades. So watching him play, it was quite evident that the guy knew what he was doing. Of course, uh, strategy, a big, big part of the game. And it's something that uh, players of this level are very, very good at and being able to adapt in situations when their player starts to get familiar with the strategy. How do you change it up and uh, keep them on their toes? And of course, being a coach, uh, you'd have to do that for other players, but we'll see how he applies that to his own game. Very much so. And of course, it's going to be interesting to see how adaptable Finn is playing a left-hander after playing you know, everyone else he's come up against being right-handers. You've got a strong left-handed player coming up in your semi-final. Something that happens in the, in the real world, but here so, we go. Of course, uh, Finn, uh, his doubles partner Nick being a left-handed player, so uh, no, uh, he's uh, pretty much good, used to it. No fear for those yeah, players. Uh, certainly looking to play into that back end as much as possible. The wider angles, of course, uh, being that uh, lefty to righty, forcing you to move more. Yeah. Oh, good serve. You can see the side spin, side spin, back spin, the ball not kicking up to the bat. Yeah. Positioned in the middle of the table and moving a little bit away as well. Not comfortable at all there for Finn. Good change up down the line to the backhand and wide to that forehand. A pretty smart tactic against lefties as well, trying to push them into deep off the table in their backhand corner, then playing out wide to the forehand once they've moved off the table. Exactly. Really opens up your opportunities. Of course, uh, Inning will be trying to do the same to Finn. Um, both having to see who can get in there first. Oh, <laughs> that is a clean, clean backhand from the center line. Yeah, that ball was quite short. Finn's body position there, absolutely fantastic getting over the ball from there. Um, certainly making sure, getting really needing to make sure he's tied on these serves and these returns here. Exactly. The, the, the risk of Finn being able to generate that much speed and spin. That was a good serve, but unfortunately not followed up. Bit, bit of a shame, really, that kicker really moving away from Finn, putting him on the back foot. You saw him step back from the table, but unable to convert. Potentially a bit of nerves happening at the moment, though, Andrew. Completely Cross. understandable. Still the early, early stages of the match. Plenty of time to get through them. And, of course, one of those important things of that first game is, is being able to feel how your opponent plays as well. And uh, we see that uh, even players of the top level losing game one and then going on and winning the next three or four. Absolutely. And they'll be see how he adjusts to the, the different pace that, uh, that Finn gives. Of course, a, a slower one here to the, the backhand, or the forehand side for, uh, for Yuning. Oh, he, I mean, he catches it so, so well over the table. It's something that uh, 
Finn has really been uh, strong at, and I'd argue one of the best in Australia, at being able to really get over the table, particularly with his backhand, and even against the, the best players in the world. Uh, players such as Fan Chidong in the World Championships. Really, Yinning's really trying to go for that tactic of trying to get middle wide to the forehand and not quite giving himself an opportunity on that next ball, however. Finn's really controlling his returns quite well against Yinning's serve. Particularly taking the ball early as well, not really giving uh, Yinning any time to be able to adjust. <laughs> he was going for it. Close. Oh, it hit. Oh, it hit. Finn calls it. Oh, he can certainly see it closer from where, than where we can. So good sportsmanship. Yeah, absolutely. Good okay. to see. Now leading by five points. Yeah. Moving that far over, of course, to receive with your backhand that certainly opens up that corner for attack. You've got to really, really make sure you convert with that one. Three nine down. Oh, fantastic counter there from Finn. Keeping I mean, his balance really, really well there. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Vision. The way he uses his wrist, being able to change the direction at that last moment, the way he just, like, pancakes it. Oh, really yeah, well taken. Nice. Yeah, good control over that ball. Much body, better body position there from Yuni. And he's going to have to do that a lot more, really getting those wide angles to, to Finn's backhand because Finn currently is... Uh, Eating up those ones in the middle really comfortably. Pushing it far out wide on Yitting's forehand and causing a lot of damage there. Oh, what a serve. Perfect length. That's the serve we all look for and train for, that half long right onto the edge of the white line. I mean, if you've... Absolutely delicious. I mean, if you've ever seen Finn, he's that player that is constantly practicing his serves. I remember last year at the Oceania Champs, while everyone else was uh, hitting with plays, he'd be sitting there for up to an hour just practicing different types of serves really trying to, to get those shorter ones like we saw there and of course paying off the serve one of the only times in table tennis where you have full control of what's happening and you've got to make it count absolutely serves is probably the most important part of the game not probably they are the most important part of the Indeed. game like you said it's the only moment where you have full control of your situation something i spend a lot of time on as well personally especially as i get older and less fitter it's even better to have a good serve at that point. Not that that's a problem for Finn, though. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting to see, however, what kind of tactical changes are going to come about here from Yinning's side of the table. Um, you'd probably expect to see quite a bit of change with quite a dramatic scoreline, 11-4. Quite obvious that he wasn't fully in the game at that point. So things going to have to happen a little bit differently for him to, to really get in with a chance here. Yeah, and I would say that uh, there's always this level of nerves when you're playing a, a player of such a high profile that Finn is, and it's about also overcoming that. As the player's now ready for game number two of this best of five, Finn to serve. Love all. And already holding a bit of a stronger position over the back of the table there, not quite sitting so far over in his back end. Finn very strong with his back end, but uh, there's still weaknesses. Yeah. Again, playing it wide into the back end. You can see these tactical changes are very, very important. I wonder as well when Finn went over to the other side of the table, was he thinking, do I stick to the same plan? Or is something going to come a little bit differently over to me now? Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh so close. Oh, <laughs> I was actually to say before, one of the, the things that uh, Yinning was doing really well was uh, actually changing the pace, making it that little bit slower and uh, getting Finn to have to try and overextend to force errors. Fantastic movement there from both players, covering all edges of the court as well. Very well. Right idea, keeping it uh, the half long. And certainly that is a... Um, spot that you really, really got to be careful where you're placing it in that forehand spot. Um, Yining is really keeping it off Finn's forehand as much as possible and playing that middle area can certainly force an error sometimes. Oh, so good. And it, it reminds me of uh, the tactics that Ma Long does is really inviting the player to, to open up and say, go for it. I, I can just control you or, or you miss it, you know. 
I'm, I'm down for both options. Well, if the ball's heavy enough and it's, half, and it's half long, but it's only just floating off that back end of the table, it's still very, very difficult to pick up with a strong attack. Much better there from Finn and his control and position over the table. Good start here, beginning now. Two points ahead in the second game. Both players still a long ways to go. They are to get through the semis into the finals. Yannick now with the serve. 4-2. It's the right idea. Yep. So great placement there from Finn right at the elbow of Yannick. You can see him really uh, trying to get Finn to use that backhand on the forehand side. Good change, good really change good of placement. serve. You can see Finn wasn't ready for it either. No, he was moving across to try and take that on the forehand, so for sure. the right idea. Yeah, absolutely. He saw the opening. Bit, little bit saw the opening, but just moved that fraction too late to be able to get the contact he wanted on that ball, unfortunately. Say a little bit of a sigh of relief for, for Yuning. Two points up with the serve. Oh, very, very well caught. Despite it being in that middle body, just being able to, to, to just Get in that position, really like stretching his, uh, his waist and body to be able to fetch it, even despite that deep placement into his body. The flexibility. You need very good leg strength to be able to get that low and keep control. Strong balance. And that's that half long distance we keep talking about that's been so valuable in this game for both of our players really a matter of who really takes advantage of those half on balls as early as possible in the rally. I mean, I was saying before, you know, in this situation, Yuning was, was asking for Finn to open it and, and just waiting there patiently to, to, to kill it down to his backhand. Much, much stronger showing from Yuning, Yuning here now. Up by three points in the second game. And you could see immediately after that push went up in the air that he knew what he'd done, moving straight back into his corner and getting ready for the attack. Just not quite quick enough. Been jumping all over that, that slip up. Oh, that was clean. Absolutely great setup. Those are the sort of points that you go away and you practice every single time and nailed it. Nailed that combination. It's also that, uh, that risk factor, the high risk, high reward. At this level, you have to go for those risky shots because you can't really let your opponent uh, take that uh, chance. Again, going for that third ball, getting right on top of it as soon as possible. I think it's very, very important here for these boys. No, notice though, we're seeing both of them starting to attack the middle even more, trying to reduce the amount of range and spin that opponent that their opponent can get, both forehand and backhand. Mm. Yeah, a little bit too wide, just give, like we just said, giving Finn that little bit of extra room to rotate and get the spin on the ball. I mean, too it's, quick. It's so beautiful in the way he is able to just get those shots. I mean, you you hardly hear it. You hardly hear it, but 11-7 uh, here for Yuning. You can definitely see, I would say, the nerves starting to settle in uh, and uh, a much, much stronger showing uh, from Yuning. Much, much better than the first game. And uh, Finn is going to have to find a way to adjust. 
Absolutely. He's, certainly, he's playing a lot more. Getting Wang is certainly playing a lot more from the middle of the table. He's controlling the ball a little bit more, looking to sort of use his back end earlier in the rally and then pivot to the forehand, whereas in the first set he was very quick to pivot and being nervous and not quite in the position that he needed to be moving that quickly and jumping into pivot didn't quite work for him. Body position a lot better in that second set. Exactly, and definitely the placement that uh, the half long really uh, testing Finn's ability to get into that open up and not just to open up but for it to be an aggressive shot that just can't be uh, killed past. Uh, we'll see what the players have certainly for game number three. Finn is certainly going to need to make sure he plays an aggressive game here because otherwise Yining Wang is going to come at it. That's what we've seen in the last game and I'm sure we're going to see much more of the same sort of thing. Exactly, and as the players now coming back for game number three, one game apiece. There's still anyone's match. Now getting with the serve. The best of five, the men's single semi-finals. Love all. And that time Finn putting pressure on Yining's in and out movements, moving him forward, back and forward again, forcing a really an, a push error. Not as simple as it looks like. Very, very true. A heavy backspin. And that's the initiative that you, uh, you want to see at this level. Absolutely. Really strong pick up on the backhand flick there. As soon as he saw that that ball had some height, Finn really took care of it and moved it far out wide to getting one's backhand. A forehand, sorry. And this time Finn really looking to pivot and use his forehand a lot more. Very aggressive play in these first few points. And he knows that he can't afford to let Yining to get into that opening. It's the right idea, and you can uh, you can see Finn telling himself that uh, it, it's it's what he needed to do. And those are those moments, you know, those are those those misses where you could almost call it an, not that any miss is acceptable, but an acceptable miss when you're going for the shot that you meant for and missed by a very small margin. You know, always looking for the positives and a, a very, very positive stroke there by Yining into that middle. So every, uh, every point to be proud of something and even if you miss it, I think you can be proud of uh, taking that initiative, trying to go for it. Absolutely. Sometimes a, po a point lost doesn't mean a match lost. And if the attitude is right and you're going for your shots appropriately, missing one but landing three on the next attempt is where you want to be. Did a fantastic shot by Yining. Taking that time, being patient, stepping around, getting into the middle forehand of him. There's a lot of pace and velocity coming off that forehand at the moment. Certainly something to be really aware of on Finn's side of the table. It's quite difficult to counter the way that ball's coming through. Ooh, I mean, <laughs> it is uh, part of the game, unfortunately. Yeah, there's uh, certainly no doubt that time around that that one hit the edge. That is true. <laughs> there's the opportunity that we're talking about, that moment of, moment of power where you see that ball sitting there in the, around the middle of the table. Look for that opportunity, both players needing to take that forehand. Finn doing a fantastic job to pin that deep into the only one's back end corner. Exactly, that's the, the extra depth of the game. It's not just about getting the strokes, it's where you get them. The strategy, the placement. Finn, Finn was good to be able to, to bring it back that little bit slower, but uh, getting playing more patiently than he did, of course, in the first game, and now no longer missing those balls. Cheeky little no-spin serve, that one. Just sort of sitting up for Finn's forehand, not quite being able to make his timing on his open up there. Oh, that is the point of the match. No questions asked. That was absolutely insane. The way the two were able to just move 
the forehands of forehand counter exchange. I'm pretty sure I didn't see any backhands in that rally there, Andrew. It was pretty pretty fantastic from both players. Might have been the point of the tournament so far, actually. I would uh, I would concur. Now Yining leading by one, despite being down before. Fantastic placement, moving that ball into the into the hand and elbow of Yuning Wang. Really difficult to be able to get down and get over that ball with a strong top spin when the ball's moving at you at your elbow. And also a very important point to break that uh, momentum shift that Yuning Absolutely. was starting to build up. Very big psychological elements to the game. I hear people saying 75% mental, 25% physical. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> this is the greatest thing about these types of matches. The level just keeps building and building and building. The points just getting better and better as both players are finding their form. Absolutely. I thought both players had won, won the point three times before anyone had actually <laughs> gone through and done anything. Unbelievable. I mean, that backhand by uh, Finn, most players would be nowhere near it. And, and getting able to move and get in position to counter it as well. Really, really great. And not just a counter on the table, but well placed, you know, to, to keep fighting in the point. Now, seven all in the, the third game, a very important game to take that two to one lead. One all, seven all, definitely anyone's game at this point. Number one seed. The serve. Strong I mean, pick up off the let there. Really, really good to be able to get that net. And the way he bends his body. I mean, he, look like, he looks like he's about to fall into the ground. Yeah, there's a lot of balance that goes into your table tennis training. Particularly being able to keep your balance while moving. And um, staying very low. Very, very difficult. A lot of work goes into that. Of course, it's one of those things like he could have gone to the backhand, but by uh, moving his body in that way, the side spin for the ball to curve out wide to the forehand Certainly. as well. Now, strong initiative there from Finto in that point. He's it, really having to mentally keep it together at this moment in time. I'm sure there's some nerves coming across. Especially when you're the, the favourite to win. Absolutely. Additional pressure. Pushing, pushing him out wide on the forehand and then moving it across to Finn's backhand to give him that little bit of discomfort. Plus with a little bit of a net on the way through just to make it interesting. Yeah, I was going to say uh, the change of pace, very important. Uh, there you could see uh, Finn just slightly rushing into it because of that. We enter the uh, later stages of this game, getting up by one despite being down earlier in this game. Oh, what a serve and third ball. That's the bread and butter of table tennis, the serve and third boards, but we all practice. Absolutely. And that ball had popped up, but it certainly wasn't in a very comfortable position for anyone. Getting really covering a lot of the table to get across and open with the forehand. 90% of players would have had to take that with their backhand, I think. Exactly now, Finn with two serves, though. A lot of pressure. Number one seeds. Down by two. Placing that ball into the hand as well. Very, very uncomfortable. That top spin and the ball moving into you is very, very uncomfortable when you're over the table. Strong attack there from Oh, I mean, you could see what he was trying to do there. The change of serve, and it was working. Such a great fight into it, beginning just ready for it. His level stepping up every single point. Now two games to one. And the number one seed definitely in a bit of a pickle. Yeah, it's very, very tight, but of course, needing to now win two more games back. And the players at the back of the court recognizing that Finn needing that little bit of extra space and giving him a little bit of room there to hit his shots. 
Uh, pressure's on now at this moment in time, though, of course, because um, Yinning's certainly not going to back down from the fight. He's um, kept those nerves at bay after that really tight first set and just played very consistent table tennis, really just waiting for that opportunity to hit a very strong forehand, being prepared to counter, prepared to attack as soon as possible, and just making Finn feel like he's under constant pressure. Exactly, and of course, uh, we, uh, we do love seeing our upsets here, and this would definitely be one. Um, but uh, it's one thing I've known about Finn is that uh, he finds a way. He's very, he does pretty well under pressure. Um, we'll see uh, if that experience at that top level, being in these positions before, can uh, help him get back into this match. Now down by one. Absolutely. This is the sort of moment I look at when I'm watching these matches from afar and thinking this is where it gets interesting. Not that it hasn't been interesting so far, but this is where it gets interesting. Guys. And this is uh, another dimension, the next level you think of, uh, of a game leveling up. Now both players back for game number four. Yinning Wang from uh, New South Wales. One game away from claiming an upset, but Finn here to try and climb back in with the serve to do it. Level. A good serve to start with it, the tight backspin to that uh, center line. Yeah, with, the, with the side spin and backspin moving away as well. Yinning coming across with the backhand, but moving too far out wide to be able to control it. And that certainly worked as a better return because he had, it, had the focus and just decided, I am going to take this serve with my forehand. And realistically, that seemed to be a better option for him in that moment of time. One all. Such a good change of pace, slowing it down to get into that position where he's able to start drilling them past. But really great anticipatory movement from Finn to allow himself to be able to get control of that ball with that extra side spin pushing the ball out wide as well. Yeah, exactly. Pace, such an important part of the game, even in those fast counter exchanges. Ooh, but unfortunate to bear the net twice. Yeah, absolutely. Tricky point there. Both players, two apiece. Each game up to 11 points. Finn returning the favour with a little bit of an edit of his own. It's how it works in table tennis. It comes in waves sometimes. They might not all go your way, but you'll get them back eventually. Something I uh, love that uh, Adam Bobra says, uh, table tennis karma. <laughs> Again, there it is, that, that change of pace. The first one being slightly slower and then taking that, uh, that extra pace. And it adds another level for the players to have to think about uh, where their time gets cut in half. Absolutely. And, and the slower ball, of course, meaning that you may need to move in rather than actually consistently stay back and counter hit. Uh, the in and out movement, of course, a lot harder for table tennis players. It takes a lot longer to move in and out than it does side to side. Exactly, even at this, uh, at this high level, still being tested. Open to the middle and open out wide to the back end. We've been a lot further back on the court. Those are those bread and butter points we talk about that Yuning needs to be able to convert in order to get back himself back in this game. Exactly, but... Uh of course, he has to still be ready for the next one because uh, Finn does get those shots back from the table. Great distance on that serve there. Finn really, again, looking for his initiative and trying to attack, but that was, ball was just that little bit too short to be able to get a hold of. A bit of frustration as well. Understandably so. Things just not working the way he's hoping for. Oh, very good serve. Really taking advantage of that uh, center line with the side spin. Trying to get Yinning to use that back end on the forehand side. 
very slow ball there from getting really big difference. It certainly took Finn by a shock, I think, a little bit there. Wasn't in a position to handle something that slow. Still had spin, but it wasn't in a comfortable position at all. Yeah, a bit too far back as the ball uh, didn't kick up as far as he was hoping. Beautiful half-long placement of that push. Of course, that's a bit of the Fan Dong special, we call that one. The, uh, the strong half-long push into the corners rather than into the back of the side of the table. Adding that extra dimension of difficulty trying to return that ball over. Oh, so well caught. That half-long ball thing. Getting it deep into that back end before going down the line to the wide forehand to lead by two points. A very important game for Finn, of course. He cannot afford to lose another. Well constructed point there. Of course, I think everyone here would love to see a fifth and final game. Absolutely. This, this has been so good, we, didn't, we don't want it to end, boys. <laughs> Ooh, it was well set up. Absolutely. Short no spin. Slight hesitation. Of these uh, more high pressure situations. Oof. Oh, very lucky there as well. Again, it all comes in swings and roundabouts. Seven all now, back on serve. Of course, it's important uh, when you get a net against you to be able to refocus. Recenter your thoughts. Ah! Beautiful placement of that push. Been understandably frustrated with that second push going very, very deep into the body. I mean, uh, we were saying before the uh, match started, the strategies. And we're seeing these strategies coming out from Yining right now. And again, pressure deep into Finn's backhand corner. Just consistent, consistent left-handed topspin off the forehand, deep into the backhand. Finn really wanting to get around and hit a forehand, but just not having that opportunity. Serve now. Trailing by two. I mean, this is such good play. And very strong comeback here from getting as well, of course, with him being down earlier in this game. Probably would be generally the moment I would call a timeout. But with Finn with no coach, it's kind of up to him at this point. Very much indeed. Big backhand in a very crucial moment. Shots like that, it, they might look like they're quite comfortable, but they sort of float up in the air. You've got to really adjust for that ball and be able to hit through strongly, otherwise you're going to get a counter hit back. Exactly, and of course for Yuning, it's never over until the last point's played. Been a lot of fighting spirit still. Two more match points here. Oh, oh, very, very close. more. Millimeter or two higher, and that ball would have gone just where he wanted it. But that table tennis is a game of millimeters. Smart timeout. 10 9 to break that rhythm. And credit for Finn to be able to play those risky shots despite being 10 7 down. I mean, you cannot afford it a situation like this to, to play passively. Absolutely. And a moment like this from Yuning with the serve at 10 9 with his match point after losing the last two points. There are quite a few different ways you could go from a tactical perspective, right? You can go for the surprise factor. You can go for something that you haven't done up until this point and hope that Finn is looking for something standard. Or you can go with what you do best and focusing on being able to pivot and do that third ball, being able to get yourself in that strong position. Exactly. There's a few options here. Let's see which one he takes. The pressure behind Finn. Tension. One match point. Two saves by Finn. Oh, oh no goodness. way! <laughs> I mean, that is a saving grace if I've ever seen one in my life. I, I don't know what he 
did to earn that moment of good luck, but at match point down, being stuck back and lobbing and just catching that edge there. I mean, <laughs> never over until the last point's Absolutely. played. Absolutely. Heavy pressure around the middle of the table. A lot of backspin on that push. Been really needy to work hard to lift that one up. Exactly a fourth match point here with the serve again. And that is done. 12 10. Three games to one. The number one seed has been knocked out. And that is definitely an upset for the books. But I guess that is uh, one of the things that happens with a more unfamiliar player. Absolutely. I mean, Yuning Wang certainly being a player that Finn probably hadn't played against before. He might have seen him hitting, but having to kind of make it as he goes along. Our um, Olympic player here and Oceania champion going down in his semi-final. Looking like we're going to see Yuning Wang and Jonas Su in our final coming up very, very shortly. Indeed, but, uh, you know... Uh Finn, he gave it his effort and uh, definitely would say he didn't feel the most comfortable compared to uh, other tournaments he's played and understandably uh, tired and from coming from the Olympics. But uh, credit where credit is due, Yining putting on a fabulous performance. And as I said at the start, you know, players losing that game one to feel the match and then winning the next three or four, and that is exactly what we saw here. Yining losing that first game, not feeling uh, particularly comfortable, but then getting through those last three and... Uh, it's all you could want from, uh, from a player, and, and certainly from someone who uh, doesn't have as much pressure, but also has to face someone of such a high level and caliber. Absolutely. Certainly a very satisfying win from his end, for sure. Indeed. And, Looking uh, forward to that final coming up. Yeah, we'll be back for that final uh, relatively shortly. Two fabulous players to take the court to gain that men's singles title. We'll be back for that shortly See after this. Now.